College closed. The apprehension of what has been and must be the final outcome of material organization, which wars with love's spiritual compact, caused me to dread the unprecedented popularity of my college. Students from all over our continent and from Europe were flooding the school. At this time, there were over 300 applications from persons desiring to enter the college, and applicants were rapidly increasing. Example had shown the dangers arising from being placed on earthly pinnacles, and Christian science shuns whatever involves material means for the promotion of spiritual ends. In view of all this, a meeting was called of the board of directors of my college, who, being informed of my intentions, unanimously voted that the school be discontinued. A primary class student, richly imbued with the spirit of Christ, is a better healer and teacher than a normal class student who partakes less of God's love. After having received instructions in a primary class from me, or a loyal student, and afterwards studied thoroughly science and health, a student can enter upon the gospel work of teaching Christian science, and so fulfill the command of Christ. But before entering this field of labor, he must have studied the latest editions of my works, be a good Bible scholar, and a consecrated Christian. The Massachusetts Metaphysical College drew its breath from me, but I was yearning for retirement. The question was, who else could sustain this institute under all that was aimed at its vital purpose, the establishment of genuine Christian science healing? My conscientious scruples about diplomas the recent experience of the Church fresh in my thoughts, and their growing conviction that everyone should build on his own foundation, subject to the one builder and maker God, all these considerations moved me to close my flourishing school, and the following resolutions were passed. At a special meeting of the Board of the Metaphysical College Corporation, October 29, 1889, the following are some of the resolutions which were presented and passed unanimously. Whereas the Massachusetts Metaphysical College, chartered in January 1881 for medical purposes to give instruction in scientific methods of mental healing on a purely practical basis, to impart a thorough understanding of metaphysics, to restore health, hope, and harmony to man, has fulfilled its high and noble destiny, and sent to all parts of our country and into foreign lands students instructed in Christian science mind healing to meet the demand of the age for something higher than physic or drugging. And... Whereas the material organization was, in the beginning in this institution, like the baptism of Jesus, of which he said, Suffer it to be so now. Though the teaching was a purely spiritual and scientific impartation of truth, whose Christly spirit has led to higher ways, means, and understanding, the President, the Rev. Mary B. G. Eddy, at the height of prosperity in the institution, which yields a large income, is willing to sacrifice all for the advancement of the world in truth and love. And, whereas, other institutions for instruction in Christian science, which are working out their periods of organization, will doubtless follow the example of the alma mater after having accomplished the worthy purpose for which they were organized. And the hour has come wherein the great need is for more of the spirit instead of the letter, and science and health is adapted to work this result. And whereas the fundamental principle for growth in Christian science is spiritual formation first, last, and always, while in human growth, material organization is first, 
and whereas mortals must learn to lose their estimate of the powers that are not ordained of God and attain the bliss of loving unselfishly, working patiently, and conquering all that is unlike Christ and the example he gave. Therefore, resolved that we thank the state for its charter, which is the only one ever granted to a legal college for teaching the science of mind healing, that we thank the public for its liberal patronage, and everlasting gratitude is due to the President for her great and noble work, which we believe will prove a healing for the nations and bring all men to a knowledge of the true God, uniting them in one common brotherhood. After due deliberation and earnest discussion, it was unanimously voted that as all debts of the corporation have been paid, it is deemed best to dissolve this corporation, and the same is hereby dissolved. C. A. Fry, Clerk When God impelled me to set a price on my instruction in Christian science mind healing, I could think of no financial equivalent for an impartation of a knowledge of that divine power which heals, but I was led to name $300 as the price for each pupil in one course of lessons at my college, a startling sum for tuition lasting barely three weeks. This amount greatly troubled me. I shrank from asking it, but was finally led by a strange providence to accept this fee. God has since shown me in multitudinous ways the wisdom of this decision, and I beg disinterested people to ask my loyal students if they consider $300 any real equivalent for my instruction during 12 half days or even in half as many lessons. Nevertheless, my list of indigent charity scholars is very large, and I have had as many as 17 in one class. Loyal students speak with delight of their pupillage and of what it has done for them and for others through them. By loyalty in students, I mean this, allegiance to God, subordination of the human to the divine, steadfast justice, and strict adherence to divine truth and love. I see clearly that students in Christian science should at present continue to organize churches, schools, and associations for the furtherance and unfolding of truth, and that my necessity is not necessarily theirs, but it was the Father's opportunity for furnishing a new rule of order in divine science and the blessings which arose therefrom. Students are not environed with such obstacles as were encountered in the beginning of pioneer work. In December 1889, I gave a lot of land in Boston to my student, Mr. Ira O. Knapp of Rosendale, valued in 1892 at about $20,000 and rising in value, to be appropriated for the erection and building on the premises thereby conveyed of a church edifice to be used as a temple for Christian science worship.